Hi guys, welcome back to The Home and Homestead. I'm Rebecca, and today we're going to be doing a fun and festive fermentation project where we make a sweet red cabbage sauerkraut. This is a really colorful and flavorful sauerkraut that you can make and enjoy any time of year, but I'm going to be making it and sticking this in the refrigerator so we can enjoy it throughout the holiday season. So let's head to the kitchen and prepare our ingredients for this fermentation project of sweet red cabbage sauerkraut. So when making homemade sauerkraut, it's a really versatile recipe that you can create various flavors and varieties. You can check out where I did a green cabbage sauerkraut recipe and I did four different varieties and then I also showed you how to store and can that. Today we're going to be doing a red cabbage version and with this I'm going to add some other ingredients that really will help intensify the flavor and add a fun twist. So I'm going to add some apples and carrots and that'll help kind of sweeten up the sauerkraut and the red cabbage will make it really bright and festive. So I measured out some cabbage and I have about seven pounds of cabbage. I have some I had two beautiful red cabbage heads and then I had one really small green cabbage head that worked perfect to get the amount and weight that I wanted. So you can measure that in grams and pounds and the amount of salt that you add for making your homemade sauerkraut is usually between two to three percent of the weight in grams of what you're going to be making. Or it ends up being about a tablespoon of a canning salt per two pounds of your ingredients. So again I have about seven pounds of cabbage and I have about one pound of carrots and apples. So I have about three cups of a shredded carrot and three apples. Honeycrisp apples or Granny Smith work really well for this, but you can use whatever variety that you like or have on hand. And I peel, cord and slice my apples. And again, the carrots are shredded and ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is cut our cabbage into the shredded form. So you can do however thick you would like and between a quarter inch and a sixteenth inch works really well. And then place the shredded cabbage into a nice size bowl. You can do all red cabbage or you could supplement your recipe like I did and, had, and add a little bit of the green cabbage. The green cabbage will eventually take on the coloring of the red cabbage during the fermentation process. Okay, so we have half of the cabbage all shredded into this bowl. So now I'm going to add the canning salt. So since we'll have about four pounds of ingredients for the sauerkraut, I'll add about two tablespoons of a canning salt to this. Now I'm going to kind of toss this cabbage all around and squeeze and smash and mash the cabbage. And this canning salt will help to release some of the liquid from the cabbage, which will eventually become the brine. for our sauerkraut. So I'll probably use my hands to mix and smash and stir the cabbage with the salt. Then I'll let this sit for about a half hour so that it can continue to release a little of that liquid and condense down. And then we'll add our carrots and apple. So using your hand works really well for this. But you can also use a wooden masher or tamper. And I have a complete fermentation kit that I purchased and it comes with all the accessories and things you need to get you going with the home fermentation process for fluids. So I have that first round of our red cabbage sauerkraut going in that large mixing bowl. So that would be like a single batch. Now, since I'm doing a double batch, I decided to get my really big 16 quart stainless steel bowl out 
And I'll add that first batch of the cabbage into here and so we can mix it all into one container. But I wanted to show the difference in preparation between a really big batch and, a, and your typical batch. If you're planning to make quite a bit and it's all one variety, then getting a large mixing bowl such as this might be something you might want to look into doing. Okay, so we have this round of the cabbage in our bowl. So again, it's going to be about four pounds of ingredients for this batch. So I will do about two tablespoons of a canning salt. You can also weigh your ingredients in grams and then do between two to 3% of that weight in weight in grams of the canning salt. So let's toss and mix and mash and smash this cabbage with that canning salt and help it to release some liquid to create a nice brine for us. Let's get our wooden masher or tamper in here. And I'll continue to prepare this for about 10 minutes. And then I'll add the other bowl of the prepared cabbage. With this one, we'll let it sit for about a half hour. All right, so we have our cabbage all ready to go and ready to add the next ingredients, which will be the carrots and the apple. So I have about three cups of a matchstick or julienne carrot and three apples that I peeled, cored, sliced, and then cut them into a matchstick shape or julienne as well. I'll just mix these ingredients together here. And then we have our clamp top lids with their silicone rings. So I'm just going to take a handful or two at a time and place this into the jar. I have it over a rimmed baking pan and that just helps contain some of that mess. Now we're going to tamp down everything with our wooden masher or tamper. There we go. We'll add some to the other jar. And we'll probably need four jars for this volume of red cabbage sauerkraut. I have a couple other jars ready to go as well. So let's fill these two up first. And you see as you mash it down in the jar, more of that liquid is released, that brine. And it'll come up eventually to cover our sauerkraut. All right, so we have our four clamp top jars all filled with our sweet red cabbage to become sauerkraut as it ferments. So next what we're going to do is take a couple of pieces of red cabbage leaves. This is, these are the outer leaves that I peeled off and I reserved for this point in time. And I'm going to press this down onto the cabbage that's shredded and mashed. I'm going to do a double layer of leaves. If there's any big surplus of that leaf, I'm going to peel that off so that everything is submerged under that brine. And as you press that leaf down, it keeps all those shredded bits of cabbage down in that brine. So I'm going to do that for all four of these. And the reason I'm doing a double leaf over this is so that if I have any 
discoloration or calm yeast that may form during the fermentation process, which is just this kind of white scummy appearance on the top of the sauerkraut. I can remove that top leaf and then still have a leaf below it, keeping that shredded cabbage down in the brine. Now when you're doing sauerkraut, either in these clamp top type of jars or in a large mason jar or something like that, you want to make sure you leave headspace room in your jars because as the sauerkraut ferments, it will create some more brine and you want to give it room for that in whatever container that you're using. There we go. So we have probably a good inch of brine over the top of each of these. Now with that complete fermentation set I spoke about earlier, it comes with these glass weights. So I'm going to press that on top of the leaf. I can press that down. And this will help keep everything weighted down on top of that shredded cabbage during the process of fermentation. Now I'm just going to take a wet paper towel that I just moistened with some water and I'm just going to clean off the jar the lid, the seal, and I like to go down and wipe to about the level of where the sauerkraut is as well. There we go. And now we just simply seal this style of jar. You close the lid and clamp it shut. If you were using mason jars or something like that, then you would use the airlock silicone tops, much like I do in the green sauerkraut videos. I have a recipe and canning of that. You can see how to use those items when doing the fermentation process using a mason jar style jar. So now I will put this in a cool dark place for between, usually takes between two to four weeks. And after a day or so, I'll go down and I'll burp these jars and then once a week burp them as well and just make sure everything looks as it should. At about week three that's when I'll probably give it a taste and see how it's doing and see if it's to that sweet tart red cabbage sauerkraut flavor that I want. Now if you notice that it's not quite as sweet as you'd like when you finish this fermentation process just know that whenever you're preparing this whether you serve it cold or hot you can always add a little granulated sugar to sweeten it up at the time of serving or whatever sweetener you prefer. So I'll set these in a cool dark place and let these ferment. All right, so it's been about three days since we started our sweet red cabbage sauerkraut. And as you can see at the top, um, in all of the jars, there are a number of bubbles and that's showing that fermentation is happening. So what I'm going to do is since these are clamp top, lid jars. I'm going to burp them so I'm simply going to open the lid and release any built up pressure and close it again. There we go. So we'll let these continue to sit and I'll check them periodically and I'll be burping once a week. So I'm shooting for about three weeks for this process to be completed, but I'll give it as much time as it needs until it has that nice tart and sour taste of the sauerkraut with the little sweetness that we'll get from this variety. So we'll let our cabbage continue to ferment to make our sauerkraut. All right, guys, here you have it. Here's our sweet red cabbage sauerkraut. It's a nice, mild, and just ever so slightly sweet ca cabbage sauerkraut with the carrots and the apple that have then fermented. And you really don't see much of that apple in there any longer that's taken on the color of the red cabbage. And you might see a little bit of the orange depending on how long you do your ferment. I like to do this so that the sauerkraut is a nice, mild flavor. So I do about two and a half weeks, which is what I did for today. So now what I have done already is I removed the glass weights and the two cabbage leaves that were on top. There was just a little bit of this white scum that's called calm yeast and that's normal during the fermentation process. And I cleaned that away 
and removed it from the inside of the jar. You can watch part one of preparing sauerkraut to see in more detail how you can clean the glass weights and remove the leaves and any discoloration on the top layer of your homemade sauerkraut. And then now I'm going to combine the jars and make a nice full clamp top jar to go in the refrigerator and any remaining sauerkraut I will can. You can watch part two of my sauerkraut four ways video to see in more depth the water bath canning process for that. Generally speaking, you'll leave a half inch headspace. I like to do pint jars. The minimum processing time is 15 minutes depending on your elevation. And if you need additional brine, you can do one quart of boiling water with one and a half tablespoons of canning salt. But again, check out part two of Sauerkraut Four Ways to see that process in greater detail. Now our red cabbage sauerkraut can store in the refrigerator for about three to six months. And if you notice any discoloration or, or off smells, anything that's off-putting, just when in doubt, throw it out. And that holds true for all home food preservation and fermentation. So now we have a nice bright and festive red cabbage sauerkraut. I'll give you a closer look here. Nice bright red and dark pink color to it. And it's nice and crispy and has a nice crunchy texture. There's a nice mild flavor to that and you get that crunch from the cabbage and the little pieces of carrot in there. This is a fun thing to add to the table to add a bit of color and that nice crunch and tartness from a home fermented item. Well, if you like more inspiration on food preservation projects, home fermentation or dehydration, you can check out a number of videos I have on the topics as well as if you're interested in other recipes or home decor projects, you can check out those type of videos as well. Well, if you're new to the channel or haven't done so yet, I would really appreciate you subscribing. And if you enjoyed this or any other video that you watch, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Well, I hope you're having a great day. See you next time. Take care.